what attracted me first to it when, when I was approached was the story, was the book itself. I liked the story. I read it and I was like, this is really fun and really funny. And knowing that David Hyde Pierce was directing, I have so much respect for his work as an actor and I was very interested in working with him as a director. Any opportunity to work with David and Brian, I'm in. My dear pal David Hyde Pierce asked if I would play the wedding planner and who's going to say no to that? It started with me at a wedding. I happened to be sitting next to the guy I really wanted her to marry, so it should have been him. I thought that this was great fodder for a concept piece about the guests at a wedding. A mother's work is never done when her daughter's getting married. I still got When they sent me the script, I opened the first 10 pages and read that my character makes his entrance in one of the best ways <laughs> possible. It's a song! I wasn't gonna do this, I wasn't gonna get involved, but it's a sign! As soon as I got to that page of the script, <laughs> I was like, I'm in! Still we pray and we fight for a wedding that is joyous. I think I'm dying, work is never done. I heard Barbara's music, I loved it, I wanted to write a musical with her, and so, um, we did. Possibly destroy us! She had like 17 songs. One of the songs was It Should Have Been You. It should have been you. On cue. Who's better than you? Well, Lou. They tell me you own your own apartment and some land upstate. You two would have had the perfect children. What with genes that great? They tell me. It's so funny. That was the main thing. It was genuinely funny in a way that especially musical comedies tend to not be. I see people in the audience falling out of their seats and they leave the theater wiping tears from their face. Cause I'm gonna get me a little something something and a little something else on the side. So everybody walks out Feeling positive. Feeling really good. By the end of the evening, they are cheering and hooting and standing in the aisles. So it's, it's very gratifying. You and only you forever. My very favorite song in the score is I'll Love You Till the Day, which makes me laugh on a nightly basis. Love You to the Day, which is the song we sing together as our toast to the bride and groom, it is the only number in a show that's a number. So it's cool because we get to elevate it a little bit more. We know we're putting on a performance. Nick and I like to play together, so we really got a chance to bounce some ideas off of each other, do what feels comfortable, do what feels zany. There's these great vocals in the song that really allow you to like really play. I just imagine myself shooting my music video in 1980. <laughs> you know, and I get to rock it out. <laughs> there are a couple of issues that are important to me. One is uh, marriage equality, which is, uh, became a big part of people's lives. Every single character goes on the journey of finding that just by being who they are, that's enough. One of the guys wanted to write about a girl who wanted to be told she was beautiful. I was listening to a lot of jazz at that time, hanging out at clubs in the village, and it, this just came to me. And, and then I was like, okay, so I love that. And then I would say maybe four or five months later after we were sitting with it, somebody said, let's, let's make it start a little more jolting. Jenny, sweet Jenny, such a pretty face, but how you eat Jenny. I swear there's not a man you couldn't date if you lose some weight. It's really something very vulnerable to do, and so many people have said to me, you're so brave to do that song, you know, because I stand on stage and I change into my dress and I'm just wearing my slip. Beautiful, I am kind, always kind. They say that only kindness matters in the end. In the end, well, when the hell is that? So what, I'm friggin' fat. Why won't someone say, hey, you are beautiful through and through. 
And I think me being able to stand up there and sing this song saying, yes, I look like this, but why couldn't I be beautiful to somebody? Honestly, I've always looked up to you, the strongest, most selfless. No, you're the strong one. No, you're the strong one. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. That's what I, I think is a wonderful message in our show, is no matter how close people are to you, you really have to make a point of understanding them and, and making contact and, and figuring them out. And I think the audience relates. They look up there and they say, wow, I know him, I know her, I know her, I know him. I mean, I think that's one of the great things about it. I took the role of Rebecca because of the song a little bit less than. Easy to do, that's what they say. Why are you waiting to? It sort of has become an anthem for people who are coming out and being who they are. As soon as I heard the song, I was like, oh, yeah, I gotta sing that. But I know the longer I wait, the harder it gets. So try to stick to the plan. Be true to myself. I'll have no regrets. Still, I keep feeling they'll think I'm just a little bit less than. Everybody knows that casting is a big deal. So I think David, because of who he is, attracted everybody that he that he was at the top of his list. A lot of people talked about what a great cast it was, and putting these people together as an ensemble was uh, just a great idea. This has been so unique. Yes. So crazy. Yep. It is a family dynamic, and that makes it really fun. We are family you know, whatever that extended family is, and it felt very much like home. The thing about that's family is, and this was a real surprise to me, the line of that's family got a big laugh because of recognition that people realize that's what happened with family. That's family. You. Maybe the most important thing about the show for me is that it is an old-fashioned style of show, but the content of it is very much up-to-date and contemporary in a way that really surprises an audience. And yet, the sentiments expressed, the family issues, the issues about people's body weight, racial issues and sexual orientation, all these different things that sort of bubble through it, that don't upend it. It's still a wonderful old-fashioned musical, but written today. This is like still a pinch myself moment, you know, that it's actually going to come out and be like, you know, be that solid CD. I think a cast album is a tremendous way to get the actors and more importantly the piece and the music from the piece out into the world. It's exciting from the time you hear that it's going to happen while you're doing it and every time you listen to it in you know, years to come you'll go, oh yeah, that was a great time. Glad to be a part of it. Look at me, I'm grinning like that smile and Cheshire Cat. You were true perfection, and I have to tip my hat. Managing your mom to keep this day from falling flat. A perfect ending to a not so good beginning. Life affirming and a great. We were so excited when we found out that we were getting to do a Broadway cast recording because it then it like makes it legit. You want to have that forever, yeah. and now that we do, it's so cool. awesome. We're legit. Everybody involved was the best that they could be, that they were the best in oh, yeah. their business. Yeah. And they yeah. pulled out the best china, as I like to call it. I hope it somehow reflects what we do when we do it in a room and you're in the same room with me. I love the idea and I love that we live in an age where we can preserve our work. They really captured a lot of the spontaneity and the humor uh, of the live performance uh, and it's thrilling. And you hear it on the album, these people, they just soar. Love, love.